Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and welcome to the Applied Artificial Intelligence course. Uh, I hope you are all safe and doing well. As you remember that last time before going to the mid, we did a neural networks and deep learning. These were both examples of the supervised learning case. In supervised learning, what we have is that we have a training data and from that training data, we learn a model that is able to predict the uh, next uh, unseen data. So th both those cases were based on uh, the neural networks were based on kind of a graph in which uh, uh, you had neurons and the weights were being learned, uh, the weights connecting the neurons were learned so that you are able to predict the data. For the deep learning, you were using some tricks, you are using the kernel, you are using maps, convolution layers, and you are trying to learn features that will be able to predict uh, the unseen data. In our next example, we are, it's what we call the decision tree. They are a very popular branch of machine learning and uh, one of the reasons they are very important and very popular is because unlike the neural network or the deep learning methods uh, which somehow form a black box approach, uh, decision trees are very much interpretable. Neural networks may have idea nahi hota, aapke learn kar liya, input aai thi, output aai gaya, darmiyan mein thik hai, hami process pata hai ho kya raha hai. लेकिन हमें यह नहीं पता कि जी पहली लेयर के बाद जो आउटपुट आया था उसका मतलब क्या है दूसरी लेयर के बाद आउटपुट आया था उसका मतलब क्या है इट्स वेरी हार्ड टू इंटरप्रेट दैट डिसीजन ट्रीज ऑन द अदर हैंड्स आर वेरी इंट्यूटिव एंड दैट्स व्हाई इट इज पॉपुलरली यूज्ड पर्टिकुलरली इन डेटा माइनिंग बिकॉज़ अ लॉट ऑफ डेटा माइनिंग इज बीइंग डन बाय बिजनेस एग्जीक्यूटिव्स मैनेजर्स हु आर नॉट वेरी टेक्निकल दे कांट दे कांट कोड न्यूरल नेटवर्क दे कांट कोड डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम्स and uh, even if somebody else is coding them, it's very hard for them to interpret the intermediate results. So for this, we are going to use the decision tree. Now this, uh, the, the slides I have been using here is from the book Jiawe Han. Uh, we shared it in the outline, the course outline. And also from a book uh, called Introduction to Machine Learning by Alpedin in uh, 2010. It's from the MIT Press. And the slides are also partially adapted from the same book. So, to introduce what uh, it is, first of all, we need to look at the data. The data is represented, as in the case was neural, uh, in the case of the neural network, the data is presented as a set of attributes. So, you have a set of instances or examples, uh, usually represented as rows, and each row is represented by a set of features or attributes. Uh, let's call them uh, x1, x2, up to xn. Uh, and the task is to predict the label or class of the data. So we have a data, we have a value x1, x2, xn, and we are going to predict the class of that uh, data. Now the attributes can be of different types. The first type is the numerical or the continuous attribute. So in this case, the domain is ordered, uh, the domain of the attribute is ordered and it can be represented on a real line. A real line means a real number. Uh, for instance, age, uh, for instance, it could be income. So the values could be something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, even 0.33, 0.32 and so on. Uh, the next type of attributes are the ordinal attributes. They are ordered, uh, their domain is ordered, but uh, absolute difference between the value is unknown. And it's kind of a preference scale or it's a severity of an injury or something like that. For instance, if I say uh, it's raining, uh, I can describe it, it's light, it's heavy and it's very heavy. But I'm not telling you a numerical figure. Uh, you cannot calculate the um, difference or the amount between light and heavy because light is also a descriptive, uh, it can vary in, in range, and heavy is also descriptive, which can also vary in range. So, one type of attribute is the numerical or the continuous attribute, the other type of attribute is the ordinal attribute, and the third type is the nominal or categorical. In this case, the domain is finite, uh, is a finite set without any natural ordering. 
for instance occupation marital status race stuff like that so if i say color so red blue uh, yellow green black these all are categorical you can add you cannot have a uh, red point 5 or red point 2 3 something like that like you had in the continuous data and uh, when you see we say this is ordered ordered means 0.4 is greater than 0.3 0.5 is greater than 0.4 in this case we can say the grade a is greater than b b is greater than c and c is greater than d but in this case we cannot say red is greater than blue because this is just a uh, categorical data so we have three kinds of data that we are going to be using so to introduce what decision tree is um, suppose we had we were playing a game and you write down a name of an animal and uh, the other uh, party or your friend uh, with whom you are playing the game with they have to ask certain questions and from this questions they have to guess the animal and for each question that they ask your answer can be either a yes or a no you cannot give a descriptive answer so for instance if you are guessing an animal and uh, your friend asks you does it have does it have four legs so you can just say yes or no and for the friend who is asking this question the question that uh, the answer that you that you are going to give will lead to filtering of the assumptions that they are making so for instance if i if they ask you the question does the animal have four legs and your answer is yes so automatically your friend that's asking this question knows by default that the animal you are referring to is not a human or any other two legged animal they are considered two legged or even uh, many legged for instance a centipede or a millipede so it's not one of those it cannot be a kangaroo it cannot be a penguin it cannot be a human so and then they are going to ask you the next question okay if it's a four legged animal does it have horns or not and then if you say yes it means that you are you know categorically rejecting a lot of other animals for instance it cannot be a dog if it has a it cannot be a cat so if it has horns so and then they are going to ask the next question and the next question so this is a series of questions that they are going to be asking and at the answer to each question divides the possible answers that could be given so the reason we are referring to this uh, guessing game uh, and we are equating it to that of a decision tree is because at each question you are kind of forming a tree so when you ask the first question is the animal does the animal have four legs it is similar to having the root node at of a tree in which this question is asked and the domain of animals will then be separated if you are they are four legged you go one path if they are not four legged you go the other path okay so this is where the the notation of tree come from but the tricky tricky part here is what questions should you ask so we know that you can make a decision tree out of it by kind of asking these questions uh but the second part is what questions do you ask how do you make that tree which attributes will make that tree and that's what we'll be uh, discussing in this lecture so the same can be done for a fish you're going to ask uh, what kind of a fish is this so you have to ask the question does it have a long uh kind of uh, I don't know the mouth or something, and uh, what's the size of it, and what's the color of it. Where does it live in fresh water or salt water, and stuff like that. So this is how a decision tree will look like. So as you can see, that we have a basic question. The first question is, does it have feathers? And if it has feathers, the answer is true. Then you are you have categorically. Uh, in a way rejected this part of the possibility so this cannot be true if it has feathers it cannot be a fish it cannot be an animal so you are looking at birds so once you say it has 
feathers and the answer is yes you go this way and then uh, the next question is can it fly and if it can fly then you can make a prediction or maybe uh, you can go further and if it doesn't fly then you can make a prediction or maybe you can go further the question about the decision so this is how a decision tree will look like you ask a question and then you go follow one of the paths the main question is finding out these questions which questions to be asked at each node of a tree because this is a tree this is the direction we are going in the tree so the first question the second question and so on so this is the direction we are going in the tree and uh, the what we need to uh, discover here or what we need to figure out here is uh, which question is going to be the first one which question is going to be the second one why did not we ask this question first ye question pehle yahan pe bhi to ho sakta tha so kaun se sawal puchne hain aur kis order mein puchne hain taaki aap jaldi se jaldi jo hai wo answer tak aa sake jo aapke leaf note hain these are the answers these are the answers these are the predictions you are making so all the leaf note are the prediction and all the intermediate nodes are the questions that you are asking in the decision tree so what is a decision tree a decision tree is used for classification you are to predict a categorical output from a categorical or a real input for instance predicting the animal whether it was a hawk a penguin Uh, a dolphin or a bear it was there are four categories in the previous example that we just saw so you are predicting one of those categories and the input you are getting can be real valued input for instance how many legs it has whether it has feathers or not whether it has fins or not and whether it has horns or not so these are the uh, the inputs that you are being given So decision tree are the single most popular data mining tool as i said it is they are easy to understand they are very easy to implement very easy to use and they are computationally cheap it means that unlike deep learning you don't need a lot of uh, computational resources to make a decision tree they're fairly easy to make they're not that complicated they don't require that much uh, uh, computation and they are very mature and easy to use software packages are freely available so uh, you don't have to code them uh, they are available in a lot of uh, packages in a lot of software a lot of them are free as well so if you have the data you can just uh, give that software the the data and it's going to make that decision tree for you and then you can use that decision tree because it's visual it's easy to interpret so even a non technical person can be using that decision tree which gives them their popularity as compared to the neural network perhaps you have technical software that are going to, that have uh, neural networks already implemented you can use them but uh, except that you give it the data and that gives you the output it's very hard to interpret what's going on particularly for a non technical person because even for the technical person that's uh, hard enough to figure out what's going on so the representation of the decision tree uh, this is an example is a tree in which you are trying to predict the weather so you're looking at the outlook whether it's sunny overcast or it's raining and uh, if it's sunny you go and look for the humidity and yes and no or normal or high and then uh, you decide whether it's going to rain or not so the representation is that as i said before each leaf node assigns a classification so If you look at the leaf node, it is a decision yes or no, yes or no, and uh, all these are questions. All the intermediate nodes are questions. So this is a question, this is a question, and this is a question. Uh, and the question is whether uh, the humidity is high or normal, and the wind is strong or weak. And this is an example from the book in which I think uh, the question was: Are you going to play tennis or not? so each branch corresponds to attribute value and each internal node has a splitting predicate so a branch is a value for each branch this is uh, qualified by an a value of that attribute so at outlook is the attribute sunny overcast and rain are three values that, that this attribute can take 
remember we talked about attributes and they can be three types continuous ordinal and categorical uh, so this is the attribute and this is the values it can take and the leaf node as we said that they are yes and no so they are the final classes or the final labels that are that have been assigned to something attribute aap lenge uski values check karenge values ke upar split karenge jo aapke paas branching factor hoga splitting factor hoga wo values hongi karenge kis cheez ke upar question kya puchhenge wo koi na koi attribute hoga outlook kya tha humidity kya thi wind kya thi us din aur as i said before that the the main thing that we are trying to do is which attribute to look at and in which order why is humidity not here and outlook here okay why is wind not here and outlook here so uh, this is the main thing that we are going to be looking at from a machine learning perspective that let the machine learning algorithm decide which node will come here and which node will come at the second layer and uh, so on so the properties of a decision learning tree as we said before we can have continuous real valued uh, in case of real value now if you look at this if i look at this uh, this is a fairly easy tree to make why because when i say what's the outlook today it can be sunny overcast and rain there are three possibilities of the outlook today and i made a tree with three branches here the splitting criteria is Uh, because there were three possible values, I made three branches. What if this was H? So it can be any H from zero to let's say hundred. So am I going to make a hundred branches for each possible value? Uh, that will be too much, and some of the values may not even have a data associated with it. So perhaps if I'm classifying whether the person is going to pass a grade or not, or I'm going to uh, I'm predicting if uh the person let's say has an income of greater than 100000 or not uh perhaps i'm not going to have any data for people who are less than 20 years old so wo sare ke sare jo maine nodes banaye honge usme koi value associated nahi hongi unke sath so for that reason what we do is that uh when we have real valued data for instance age for instance income or if i'm taking measurement in centimeters or inches Uh, these are real value data so what i can do is for this i can define ranges so for ranges if it's length i can say length less than 3 and then if i'm making a decision tree then i am going to write uh length okay it's very difficult to write with the mouse so yahan pe mere paas aayega less than 3 uh, and then yahan pe mere paas aayega greater than and equal to 3 so this is if i had length as an attribute and i want to make a a, a tree uh, and the value and the the type of the attribute is that it has real values i can make ranges and then make this tree now how you are going to make this ranges that's another question you can make it arbitrarily arbitrarily or you can have some intuition about it for instance uh, if you look at एज नॉर्मल हम कहते हैं जी बच्चा है फिर टीन एजर है फिर यंग एडल्ट है फिर मिडल एज है फिर ओल्ड एज है एंड फिर वेरी ओल्ड एज है सो वी टेंड ऑफ हैव काइंड ऑफ हैव अ मेंटल पिक्चर ऑफ व्हाट वी आर डूइंग सो इफ यू लुकिंग एट अ किड वील से प्रॉब्ली लेस दैन ट्वेल्व एंड अ यंग एडल्ट मे बी ट्वेल्व टू एटीन और ट्वेल्व टू ट्वेंटी एंड देन अ टीन एजर एंड देन Uh, a young adult may be 21 to 35 or something a middle age will go from 35 to maybe 55 or 60 and then old age 60 to 70 or 75 and very old age may be greater than 75 so it's it's arbitrarily or you can have some mechanism of choosing that but uh, the main point is that it is possible even with real values to make these decisions and the way to do it is to split it into ranges so classification trees have discrete class labels at the leaves jo leaves mein aayega wo yes hoga ya no hoga ya any other class hogi so in all the cases the leaf node have the values so this goes for decision trees there are another type of trees which are called regression trees 
in regression trees instead of giving the output of a yes or no you are giving output a value for instance uh, if i want to say this is an animal which kind of what kind of an animal it is you are going to give me a category it's, it's a cow it's a cat it's a dog and something like that but if i'm going to ask you uh, what's going to be the stock prediction today now you're not going to give me a yes or a no or a cow or a dog you are going to give me a value that value could be maybe today you know the stock exchange will close at 42000 points or 42500 points now this is a real value that you are giving so the kind of trees uh, that give real values are called regression trees the kind of trees that give this kind of categorical values are called decision trees so or classification trees so in this lecture we are be, will be looking at the decision or the classification trees classification tree is one that gives a categorical value not a real value so regression trees this one so algorithm for finding consistent trees are efficient for processing large amount of training data and methods are developed for handling noisy training data and missing values so the model we are going to be using are good enough for noisy data and missing values as well so jo aapke paas original training data tha usme maybe some attributes are missing so this is an example of how the data is going to look like we have been talking about the feature so this is how the data would look like this is called the training data similar to what we have in neural network and the deep learning so this is the training data you are going to use it to train and this is the test data you are going to use it to verify or check whether what you have learned is right or not so in this case when i said that the data is made up of instances each instance qualifying qualified by attributes so these are the instances each row here is an instance and each column is a attribute so the first attribute is age the second attribute is in income the third attribute is student the fourth is credit rating and the category that we are trying to predict this is the category this is not an attribute this is what you are trying to predict and the if you have this data and you are trying to predict whether this person so this is a person this is an example of a person the data of a person is or her age is less than 30 the income is high they are not a student they have a fair credit rating the question being asked is whether this person is going to buy a computer or not so bias computer is ke sath ek question mark ke mein dal do so this is the question that is being asked and for that reason you see that uh, the data here given in this part uh, this data here is the given data and this is the question being asked so the test question jo hai usme ye data given hai so less than 30 high yes excellent this is the question being asked whether the person will buy the computer or not so you are supposed to make a decision tree using the training data so this this data and to predict whether this person will buy a computer or not so this is the training data in which uh, all the attributes are given and the label is also given so this is the category or the label and for the test data the data is also given but the category is missing and you have to predict for that category so when we say uh, when i'm going to be talking about the data i'm going to talk be talking about the this training data when i say instance each row is an instance when i say attribute or feature then each column here is an attribute or a feature except the last one the last one is not a feature is not an attribute but it's the uh, category so uh, sample output tree from this so this is the training data we had uh, less than 30 31 to 40 and greater than 40 and income is low and medium so, sorry low medium and high so in this case uh, we have this is a sample uh, tree that we have made so what's the age less than 30 you go this side 31 to 40 this side and greater than 40 you go here so as we can see that uh, 31 to 40 this is an example of 31 to 40 and then we go another this is another example of 31 to 40 
then we have this an example of 31 to 40 and this another example of 31 to 40. So we have four of these uh, examples and as you can see in all the cases the answer is yes, 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 yes. So by looking at this we can make a decision that if that person is aged between 31 and 40 they are surely going to buy a computer because the data says that everybody who belongs to this uh, age group buys a computer. So you have four possibilities and all of them are yes. So it's a 100% match. Four out of four yes. So in that case, this will be the leaf node. So you look at the age, if the age is between 31 and 40, then you predict, this is a prediction now because it's a decision tree. You predict that if the person is between 31 and 40, they are going to buy a computer. On the other hand, if they are less than 30, then you have a set of, you have uh, no over here and you have a yes over here. So this is a confusing, there is no definite answer and it means that this attribute age alone for uh, less than 30 is not sufficient to make the tree. So you need to make, take another uh, attribute into account. So if age is less than 30, you cannot make a definite prediction, you need a second uh, question to follow it. You remember that game we said that you, are, you and your friend are making uh, predicting and so the first question is uh, how many legs whether it has four legs or not. If the answer was yes then you answer, uh, ask the second question. So in this case uh, you cannot get categorized as of yet you need to ask a second question. So the second question being asked is whether the person is a student or not. If the answer is no, so if you are less than 30 and you are not a student, then you are not going to buy a computer and if you are less than 30 but you are a student, then yes, you are going to buy a, a computer. And that's how it is made. So if you look at this and you want to predict the data that we had, so remember we had the training data and the test data. We use the training data to make this decision tree. Now we are going to use this decision tree to predict the test data. So this is the test data we have. The first question, age is less than or equal to 30. So you go this way. This means that this whole ignored. So this is now no longer uh, going to be considered. And then uh, the second question was income. So you are not even using that. Because uh, age ke baad aapke baad next question aata hai, student ka. Student was the third column. So you look at that, the third column, the, is it a student? Yes. So student, yes, you follow here and the answer is yes. So you can predict here that this person is going to buy a computer. And that's how you make the prediction. So you build the, uh, the training, you use the training data, you build the decision tree and then now you are using the decision tree to predict your test data. This was your test data. And that's the prediction you have made that yes, this person is now, uh, this person is going to buy a computer. That's your prediction. So the design issue is, as I said before, why did we use age as the first uh, attribute? In this case, it was a short data, it's very small data. And we were able to, you know, manually look at it and see age is uh, directly. यहाँ से आपके पास एक prediction आ जाती है. इसके लिए फोन पहले level पे ही आ जाता है. सिर्फ इन दोनों को जो है वो second level पे जाना पड़ा है. So if you have a, a fairly small data, you can probably look at it and you know by trial and error you can make this decision tree. What if it's a big data and uh, the size is too big, the number of attributes are large. And so you to figure out which one will be first age यहाँ पे पहले क्यों आया student यहाँ पे क्यों आया credit rating क्यों use हुई in that case we have to figure out a mathematical or a computational way of deciding which attribute is going to come first and which is going to come later so which decision tree is the best it can it could have been this or यहाँ पे student पहले आ जाता वो भी एक decision tree बन सकता था तो इन दोनों decision trees में कौन सा बेहतर है which attribute to check first, as we just said, how to decide the split value of a real valued attribute, ki less than 30, kyunke less than 25, ki nahi humne. Uh, when to stop splitting, and how to evaluate whether the 
decision tree is right or not. You can continue splitting, but in even in this case, uh, for instance, in this case, not the entire thing was yes, but it was done with the majority voting of four by five. It means eighty percent are being correctly classified. So. To make this decision of which uh, what we are going to use as the first uh, as the first uh, as the root node and which will be the next node, we follow what is called the OCAMS reason, and in which refers to the fact that prefer the simplest hypothesis that fits the data. So, in other words, we are trying to make a tree which is the simplest possible tree, uh, even though there could be difficult trees that can fit the data 100%. But we are not interested in all the possible uh, trees that can fit the data. We are only interested in the simplest possible one. And what's the simplest tree? The shortest tree. So, सबसे छोटा tree जो होगा और सबसे छोटा tree क्या होता है जिसके levels जो हैं सबसे कम होंगे. So you would ideally like to get to a conclusion very quickly. You don't want to traverse down the tree a lot. You need to get the answer quickly. And then Uh, Albert Einstein said that make everything as simple as possible, but not simpler. So you cannot just say, "Okay, ji, okay, bus here. Here, my tree is finished. No, because it's not giving you a fair. If you finish this tree, then it will be yes or no. In this answer, it will be no or no. So you can finish it here, but you will have the conclusion. Your prediction will not be so accurate. So you will have to go down. You will have to go down. You will have to go down. so you have to go down you have to make it as simple as possible but not any simpler such that its accuracy kharab ho jaye so using these two so the basic thing is that we are going to choose uh, the root node which is going to give us the quickest or the shortest possible tree and then the next node and the next node so hamari koshish hogi ki jald az jald jo ye hai category pe hamare paas is pahunch jaye So there are two ways to do it. Intuitively, as we said, let we, like we did in the, our example, you can just uh, choose. Uh, you can just guess. You can look at the data, and, and if it's small data, you can probably make a good guess out of it. Or choose a scientific approach. And the scientific approach is you use something which is called information. It comes from the information theory. And information theory means that how good uh, you're going to make an assumption, uh, a calculation. of how good you think uh, a particular attribute is in making this classification tree and as in a lot of thing in machine learning we said greed is good so whenever we are making uh, an algorithm for instance we made a greedy algorithm best for search to go out it was a greedy algorithm you look at the best possible uh, scenario and then you follow that scenario what we did in uh, genetic algorithm that was also a greedy approach why because we look at the chromosome with the highest fitness and we use that as parents to generate a new offspring why because we thought that good parents will make good offsprings so in this case also we are going to use the greedy approach and we are going to use the information theory or mutual information or entropy to make that greedy decision the algorithm so decision tree is a name it's a broad name of a set of algorithms that make decision trees the algorithm that we'll be studying is the popularly used id3 algorithm it was developed by quinlan in 1979 but still it or its variants are still very popular even today <clears throat> so the key thing that we are going to use as i said is from the information theory uh This uh, the reference of where you can read about the information theory or this uh, particular uh, metric that we are going to be using, but it's called the entropy. The entropy h of a discrete random variable x is a measure of the amount of uncertainty associated with x. So this is the entropy we are going to be using, and based on that we can make the information gain, or we can even use the mutual information. Entropy basically जो है वो ये आपको बताता है इसे the amount of uncertainty. If I know that uh, in our previous case, if I know that the age is less than 30, how certain is am I about my data? 
for instance when i knew that the age is between 31 and 40 i was a hundred percent confident that the answer will be the prediction will be yes so if i'm using age as an attribute or age mein jab main ye wala attribute ye wala jo hai iska value use karta hu ye value mujhe 100% jo hai wo certainty de deti hai 100% ke sath main predict kar sakta hu ke this person going to buy a computer this is the uncertainty that we are referring to in uh, this uh, amount of uncertainty associated with a variable so if i use that variable how good i can make the prediction between the yes and no iske jo hai wo kitne mix up honge aapas mein that's the amount of uncertainty we are talking about here but it has a mathematical formula which we will see shortly so entropy of any data set s can be calculated as a uh, sum of the log of the probabilities so p1 p1 is a value that the attribute can take so for instance uh, not the, uh, it's not uh, we differentiated between an attribute and a category so i'm going to use the word category here instead of attribute so if p1 is the fraction of positive examples so yes in our case and p0 is the number of negative examples the no's in our case so entropy of s is given by p1 log of p1 and minus p0 log of p0 so what is this p1 the fraction of positive example the fraction so how do i look at the fraction let me go back and look at the data this is the category we have so in this i'm going to look at ek do teen char paanch che saat aat nau so yes jo hai aapke paas wo nau hai ek do teen char aur paanch nau jo hai aapke paas wo paanch hai so total aapke paas kitne ho gaye total aapke paas 14 ho gaye so what's the probability of a yes 9 by 14 what's the probability of a no 5 by 14 so let's go back to our entropy what is p1 p1 is 9 by 14 what is p0 the negative one this is 5 by 14 so what will be the entropy 9 by 14 log of 9 by 14 so minus 9 by 14 log 9 by 14 minus 5 by 14 log of 5 by 14 this is going to be the entropy of the data this is the uncertainty in the data and if i have multiple classes agar mere paas yahan pe sirf yes or no hote hain agar mere paas category jo thi wo yes or no ke bajaye low medium or high hoti so in that case i had 3 so it would have been minus probability of low log of probability of low minus probability of medium log of probability of medium minus probability of high log of probability of high ya agar aap isko sum kar dein to minus common aa jayega sum over all i where it can be pi so it can be p1 and p0 or even p2 p3 so you can sum it in the form of this for a multi class problem we have you have multiple categories this is how entropy looks like this is a plot of the entropy so agar aapke paas yes or no jo the hamari case this is just for the binary classification not for a multi value classification agar aapke paas fraction of positives agar sare ke sare cheeze positive ho fraction of positive aapke paas 1 aa jayegi probability hai 0 se 1 ke dimi hum range karegi if you have all the probabilities uh, all the values as positive as yes it means the probability is 100% because all are yes so agar mere paas 14 exam special example mein the so 14 by 14 agar mere paas yes ho then i get the value of uh, the fraction of positive is 1 the entropy corresponding to 1 is going to be 0 so agar sare yes hote to mere paas entropy 0 aani thi similarly agar sare ke sare no hote to mere paas entropy 0 aani thi let's go back and read it's the amount of uncertainty so the amount of uncertainty when we are saying is if all are yes then there is no uncertainty you can just predict it's going to be a yes 
if all are no then also there is no uncertainty you can simply go and predict everything will be no so in both cases the entropy is zero the minimum entropy it means you have a maximum certainty agar aapke paas 50 50 hai aadhe yes hai aadhe no hai iska matlab hai you are totally confused it can go either way it can go yes or it can go no in which case uh, the value is 1 so the maximum entropy can be 1 and the minimum entropy can be 0 agar data jo hai wo equally divided hai to iska matlab hai confusion maximum pe hai value 1 hogi agar data jo hai wo sare yes hai ya phir sare no hai iska matlab hai koi confusion nahi hai entropy jo hai wo zero hogi so entropy can range between 0 and 1 so in this example we are going to look at a very small data so this is my x and this is my y this is my attribute and this is my category so why is my category so attribute jo hai wo mere paas ek data hai ke there are students and this is the major of the student and this is whether that person likes the movie gladiator or not so suppose we are trying to predict the output y and what is the output whether you like the film gladiator or not and you have the input x and the input is what is your college major so if i knew what the college major of a student was then i'm going to predict whether that person is going to like the movie gladiator or not so i can simply uh, because mere paas ek hi attribute hai to main us attribute ko isme plot kar deta hu agar major math ke hain to usme yes do honge aur no do honge अगर मेजर हिस्ट्री है तो एवरीथिंग इज नो एंड मेजर सी एस है तो एवरीथिंग इज यस सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस एग्जांपल फ्रॉम हियर यू कैन प्रिडिक्ट द एंट्रोपी एज वेल क्योंकि सारे यस और सारे नो इन दोनों की एंट्रोपी जीरो होगी 50 50 डिवाइड इसकी एंट्रोपी वन होगी सो सी एस ऑल आर यस इसकी एंट्रोपी क्या होगी जीरो हिस्ट्री Everything is no. Its entropy क्या होगी? Zero. Math it is two by two, fifty fifty divide. Its entropy क्या होगी? One. So math की one है आपके पास, history की zero है, CS की आपके पास zero है. So this is how you are going to calculate the entropy of an attribute. So <coughs> the question is, this is the entropy based on the value of the attribute, math, history, and CS. What is the entropy of the attribute itself? Major was the attribute. आपका uh, undergrad में major क्या है? दिया आपका attribute था. इसके आपने जो तीन हिस्से हैं, उनकी आपने entropy निकाली है. अभी आपने पूरे attribute की नहीं निकाली. So attribute की entropy क्या होगी? The entropy of math, maybe plus the entropy of history and the entropy of CS. क्योंकि ये इसकी values हैं इस attribute की. So इस attribute का जो हमारे पास entropy निकलेगी वो इन से तीनों से मिल के निकलेगी हाउ एवर देर इज ट्रिकी पार्ट ट्रिकी पार्ट इज द डेटा इज नॉट इक्वली डिवाइडेड सी एस हैव ओनली टू स्टूडेंट्स हिस्ट्री हैव ओनली टू स्टूडेंट्स एंड मैथ हैज फोर स्टूडेंट्स सो अगर आप हिस्ट्री और सी एस सही करते हैं लेकिन मैथ को गलत कर लेते हैं तो यू आर इन बिगर ट्रबल एज कम्पेयर टू आप मैथ को ठीक कर रहे होते हैं और सी एस को गलत कर रहे होते हैं क्योंकि आपने सिर्फ दो वैल्यूज गलत कर सकते हैं यहाँ पर आप चार वैल्यूज गलत कर सकते हैं so what we'll do is we'll use a weighted probabilistic approach in other words iski jab aap entropy nikalenge to jab aap math ki entropy 1 nikalenge uske sath uski probability ko multiply karenge ki math ke major hone ki probability kya hai and to do that what we'll do is that uh, we'll calculate the probability for each of these attributes so when we calculate the probability of each of the attribute what we have is this so math ki aapke paas because there were total 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so there are total 8 data values of which math is 4 this is 2 and this is 2 so the probability of math is 4 by 8 so 4 by 8 is 0.5 and the probability of history is 2 by 8 which is 0.25 so this is 0.5 0.25 and 2 by 8, which is also 0.25. Entropy is हमने इसकी पहले निकाली है, ये totally confused था, इसकी uh, entropy जो थी वो 1 थी. This is no, इसकी zero है. This is yes, इसकी भी zero है. So when you are going to calculate the what is the entropy of major, 
सो मेजर जो एट्रीब्यूट था उसकी जब एंट्रोपी निकालेंगे तो इनको मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे जीरो पॉइंट फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई वन विच इज दिस पार्ट प्लस पॉइंट टू फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो प्लस पॉइंट टू फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो सो टोटल जो है वो इसकी एंट्रोपी आई है हमारे पास जीरो पॉइंट फाइव और ये दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज मैथ मेक्स अप फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द डेटा अगर मैथ गलत होगा तो ज़्यादा बड़ा मसला है अगर हिस्ट्री और सी गलत होंगे तो कम मसला है That is why you multiply the entropy with the probability of that value. This is the attribute. This is the value of the attribute. These are not attributes. Math, history, and CS are not attributes. The attribute was major. These are the values of that attribute. So you are going to use the values of those attribute, and then you are going to uh, compute the total entropy of the attribute. so we'll end this lecture today with uh, just a brief uh, introduction of how the algorithm is going to work in the next lecture i am going to demonstrate a practical example of the lecture from which you can you will be better able to understand how this works so in this case what the edit algorithm is doing is what is the uncertainty removed by splitting on वैल्यू ऑफ ए सो अगर मेरे पास जो डेटा था फॉर इंस्टेंस मेरे पास ये डेटा था नाउ आई हैव फोर ऑप्शन मेरे पास रूट नोट पे एज इनकम स्टूडेंट एंड क्रेडिट रेटिंग आई कैन यूज आइदर ऑफ दीज फोर वैल्यूज सो वट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज आई एम गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट द एंट्रोपी यूजिंग एज द एंट्रोपी यूजिंग इनकम द एंट्रोपी यूजिंग स्टूडेंट एंड द एंट्रोपी यूजिंग क्रेडिट रेटिंग इन में से जिसकी एंट्रोपी सबसे कम होगी मैं उसको यूज करूंगा क्योंकि जितनी एंट्रोपी कम होती है उतनी सर्टेनिटी ज्यादा हो जाती है आपके पास इफ यू रिमेंबर हमारे पास 100 परसेंट अगर येस थे तो एंट्रोपी जीरो थी 100 परसेंट नो थे तब भी एंट्रोपी जीरो थी और जहां 50 50 डिवाइड थे वहां पे एंट्रोपी वन थी सो वट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू इज वी आर ट्राइंग टू लुक एट दैट एट्रीब्यूट विच इज गोइंग टू गिव अस द लोएस्ट एंट्रोपी because the lowest entropy means the highest certainty so how i'm going to do it i'll take age and uh, these are the values jaise ki waha pe major tha aur major mein aapke paas math cs aur history so less than 30 is probably correspond to the math 31 to 40 is our history and greater than 40 is the cs aur waha pe film jo thi wo like yes no tha yahan pe kya hai category hamare paas ye hai so this is the category we are using तो बाईस कंप्यूटर हम चेक करेंगे वेन आई एम कैलकुलेटिंग द एंट्रोपी ऑफ एज आई एम गोइंग टू यूज ओनली टू कॉलम दिस कॉलम द कॉलम ऑफ एज एंड दिस कॉलम द कैटेगरी ये कॉलम हमेशा यूज हुआ करेगा कैटेगरी जब मैं एज करूंगा तो मैं ये वाला जो पार्ट है इस पार्ट को भूल जाऊंगा कि एग्जिस्ट भी कर रहा है आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू यूज द एज एंड द कैटेगरी एंड यूजिंग दैट आई विल प्रिडिक्ट आई विल कंप्यूट द एंट्रोपी ऑफ एज using uh, using this formula so <coughs> yahan pe mere paas age hogi age mein mere paas uh, less than 30 ki main probability nikalunga aur uski entropy nikalunga fir uh, 31 to 40 ki main pehle probability nikalunga fir uski entropy nikalunga fir greater than 40 ki jo hai wo main probability nikalunga aur fir uski entropy nikalunga and then i will multiply them to find out the final value and this is the formula to give it so this is the probability agar mere paas attribute s is my original data and a is the attribute i am using so ye mere paas is waqt jo hai wo age ka attribute agar main use kar raha hu so a is my age s is my original data <coughs> so what i am going to do is values mein likhunga s of v jab main age leta hu to age mein mere paas kya hai sabse pehla jo hoga mere paas less than 30 so number of less than 30 divided by total this is going to give me this probability ye wali probability jo thi wo hai wo ye ye cheez jo hai wo wali probability denote kar rahi hai so mere paas less than 30 kitne the divided by total kitne the mere paas aur uh, once i have this i have to multiply it with the entropy of that so next mein kya karunga iski entropy nikalunga kiski not age ki but एज वेयर द एज इज लेस देन थर्टी तो लेस देन थर्टी की मैं एज की निकालूंगा ये मल्टीप्लाई करूंगा 
देन आई एम गोइंग टू हैव एज बिटवीन थर्टी वन एंड फोर्टी विच इज दिस पार्ट तो अब वैल्यू मेरे पास क्योंकि बार बार ले रहा है और ये सम बन रहा है पहली दफ़ा मैं वैल्यू क्या लूँगा वी क्या होगा लेस दैन थर्टी एंड देन नंबर ऑफ लेस दैन थर्टी टू बाई टोटल मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द एंट्रोपी बिकॉज ऑफ लेस दैन थर्टी देन आई एम गोइंग टू हैव द नेक्स्ट वैल्यू विच इज थर्टी वन टू फोर्टी सो नंबर ऑफ थर्टी वन टू फोर्टी डिवाइड बाई टोटल मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द एंट्रोपी ऑफ दोज दैट आर बिटवीन थर्टी वन एंड फोर्टी ये बिल्कुल इसी तरह होगा जिसमें ये हुआ था बीज मेरे पास क्या थे मैथ हिस्ट्री और सी एस तो मैंने पहले मैथ डिवाइडेड बाई टोटल किए थे तो इफ आई एम यूजिंग दिस एग्जाम्पल वॉट विल वन आई हैव वी इज इक्वल टू मैथ दिस इज गोइंग टू बी फोर बाई एट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एंट्रोपी ऑफ मैथ विच इज़ वन नेक्स्ट मेरे पास वी क्या आएगा हिस्ट्री विच इज़ टू बाई एट और उसके एंट्रोपी विच इज़ जीरो नेक्स्ट मेरे पास वी क्या आएगा सी एस विच इज़ अगेन टू बाई एट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द एंट्रोपी विच इज़ अगेन जीरो एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू सम ऑल ऑफ दिस सो दिस इज गोइंग टू गिव मी द एंट्रोपी आई गेट फ्राम यूजिंग एज तो एज से मेरे पास ये एंट्रोपी होगी what i need to figure out is the gain i will get and the gain is i will take the entropy without considering any attribute and then subtract the entropy i get if i start considering age so when i say without considering any attribute ye kya hoga mere paas uh, ye wo minus p log of p wala ye wali cheez aa jayegi yahan pe mere paas to so, ye mere paas aayega 9 by 14 pehla hoga p p1 jo tha aur dusra mere paas kya tha 5 by 14 यानी विदाउट कंसिडरिंग एनी एट्रीब्यूट मेरे पास येस और नोस क्या है सो माइनस पी वन लॉग ऑफ पी वन सो मैं इसके साथ लॉग लगा लूँगा सो माइनस नाइन बाई फोर फोर्टीन लॉग ऑफ नाइन बाई फोर्टीन यहाँ पे मेरे पास लॉग ऑफ नाइन बाई फोर्टीन आएगा और फिर माइनस यहाँ पे मेरे पास फाइव बाई फोर्टीन आएगा और लॉग ऑफ फाइव बाई फोर्टीन यहाँ पे आएगा मेरे पास सो दिस इज करस्पॉन्डिंग टू दिस वैल्यू और उसके बाद मैं एज का निकाल लूँगा जैसे कि मैंने यहाँ पे ये ये चीज़ निकाली थी तो यहाँ पे अगर मैं इसके देखें तो व्हाट इज दैट व्हाट्स द एंट्रोपी आई हैव इफ आई डोंट कंसीडर द मेजर व्हाट इज वन टू थ्री फोर सो आई हैव फोर यस एंड वन टू थ्री फोर सो फोर मेरे पास यस है फोर मेरे पास जो है वो नो uh, no है इसका मतलब है इसकी एंट्रोपी क्या होगी वन so what is the gain I get from major this is the entropy of major point फाइव original entropy without considering the major was वन मेरे पास gain कितना होगा gain is equal to be वन minus पॉइंट फाइव दिस इज गोइंग टू बी माई गेन विच इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव सो दिस इज माई गेन दैट आई गेट द एंट्रोपी विदाउट यूजिंग द एट्रीब्यूट एंड द एंट्रोपी आफ्टर यूजिंग द एट्रीब्यूट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दैम दैट इज द गेन so in this case i am going to calculate the gain i get from age the gain i get from income the gain i get from student and the gain i get from the credit rating jiska gain zyada hoga jiska gain zyada hoga jiski entropy sabse kam hogi kyunki initial entropy to constant hai gain sabse zyada uska hoga jiski entropy sabse kam hogi सो so, ये वन जो है आपने निकाला ये या इन दिस केस दिस इज गोइंग टू रिमेन कांस्टेंट पहले आप एज का निकालेंगे फिर आप जो है वो लेट से स्टूडेंट का निकालेंगे फिर आप जो है वो क्रेडिट रेटिंग का निकालेंगे एंड सो ऑन तो ये कांस्टेंट रहेगा आपके पास जिसकी एंट्रोपी सबसे कम होगी उसका गेन सबसे ज़्यादा होगा और जिसका गेन सबसे ज़्यादा होगा दैट विल फॉर्म योर रूट नोट and then we are going to continue iteratively unless until we reach the we reach the uh, leaf nodes where either you have a yes or a no and that's how the decision tree is going to work so we'll stop here and in the next lecture we are going to follow a example a numerical example jaise ki hum class mein karte the we study the algorithm first and then we follow it by a numerical example to give a better understanding so hope you like this lecture and if you think uh, there is ways we can improve the lecture uh, please do send me a note either by email or on the ms team so that jo main next lecture taiyar karu main koshish karu ki main usme wo cheez incorporate kar saku so uh, thank you very much